my name is Colleen Lewis. I'm an associate professor of computer science at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I have the project csteachingtips.org um, and I also have a bunch of videos online about how I use physical objects to teach Java um, and I use physical objects sort of motivated by the work in math where they use physical objects to help students understand abstract ideas. So let me talk you through what I've got here and then I'm going to explain to you for my set of videos that relate to inheritance, what's the sort of how and why of those. Um, so here I've got my main method that has four in, uh, local variables in it. I have the variable A, which is of type cat and it references a cat. Variable B is of type tiger and it references a tiger. Variable C of type cartoon tiger references a cartoon tiger. And variable D of type cat doesn't reference um, anything. That one is a variable that's null. And I represent that often when I draw it with an X and here you can see the X. And actually all of these, if they didn't have one of those little remote controls um, to show what they're referencing, uh, would uh, have that X visible. So my previous videos go over how I use these memory models for introducing arrays and references um, and null and things like that. But here I want to focus on specifically the inheritance part. Um, and so with this, I want to talk about like, why do I use these physical objects? It has some of the same affordances as I have for why I use it to introduce objects in general. But here I want students to be able to reason about inheritance just in a like a higher level. So I actually don't talk about instance variables at first with inheritance. I just focus on the methods um, and I want to try and make those intuitive. So I use a method sleep. I have the cat has a sleep method and then the tiger and cartoon tiger, which are the child and grandchild respectively, um, inherit that method. I have a say hello method and they each have their own way of saying hello. I have a swim method and actually only the tiger and cartoon tiger have that method and the cartoon tiger inherits that method from the tiger. So here I want to use what might be intuitive ideas about cats not having a swim method um, and them each having their own say hello method, you know, meow and roar and hoo 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 hoo. Um, I want that um, introduction of how these method calls are going to work to be uh, intuitive for students. Um, and um, and later on, I can really try and challenge them by giving them method names and class names where they can't rely on their intuition. But I want to start it off really building their confidence and having them be able to practice that intuition. Okay, why do I have these labels here? I don't do that when I'm introducing arrays and other references. But once we start talking about inheritance, the difference between the type of the variable and the type of the object is really important. So the type of the variable determines if I can call a method. It determines whether or not my code compiles, but the type of the object determines what method I call. I really love teaching inheritance because it enforces and sort of forces us to think about some of the execution models. So when I call a method on an object, I call it on this cat object, I'm going to look in the cat class for that code. If I call a method on a tiger object, I look in the tiger method uh, for that code. Even if I had a cat referencing, so here's my cat variable A referencing a tiger. If I call a method on a tiger, that's the type of the object. If I call a method on a tiger, that uh, I look in the tiger class for that code. And that's a key distinction is my code won't even compile um, if, if I don't have the method that I'm trying to call in the class of the type. So the variables type determines what method can be called, what code compiles, and the object that it's called on, that's these physical objects, that determines where I start and look for the code. Um, and so I like teaching inheritance because it forces us to think about some of those aspects of how code gets executed. Um, and I've modified my diagrams for when I introduce inheritance to draw attention to the fact that a variable has a type and that the type between of the variable might not be the same as the type of the object. I hope you find some of these videos helpful in your teaching. 